Hello everyone. Welcome back to GGN. I don't know how long I'll be back for, but um, I have a lot of news to get to today. And it is Monday, July 29th, 2013. I'm Darko. And I no longer have a website right now, but uh, I'm going to try to work on, a next, on the next one. All right, um, I'm going to cover the war on terror, liberty, sovereignty, like usual, like usual. And we have U.S. and Russia simultaneously announce intent to arm opposing sides in Syria. Again, this you know, like a lot of times, this shouldn't be any big surprise. Um, I do love the photo of their faces, though. But um, basically, it's just saying that uh, they're both going to let uh, weapons flow in the hands of the Syrian rebels. Basically, by the congressional. Uh, lifting congressional hurdles it says all agreements between Russia and Syria and the area of armed deliveries are in place the contracts continue and are in force so I wanted to um, include a video here um, but I'm so scared to include any kind of video content in my videos because I got two strikes apparently I don't really know how to find out how many strikes I have but um, I'm one step away from losing my channel here so I'm just gonna try to be kind of conservative right now uh, this video, basically of this Mohammed Dar Jamo, a political analyst and commentator who often appeared on many Arab TV stations to defend Syria's sovereignty, was assassinated in Lebanon in the hands of gunmen who broke into his home in the Lebanese southern city where his wife is from. He was shot nearly 30 times. You can see this. Type this in. Excerpt from last interview of pro-Syrian government political commentary. Uh, assassinated Lebanon. He talks about some high-tech kinetic weapons that we were speaking about. Uh, basically, the... Uh, the interviewer, uh, the news, inter uh, basically the journalist, was trying to get him to uh, say where these weapons were coming from, but he wouldn't say. But he said that these weapons do not exist anywhere else, and they were basically crafted specifically for Syria. And he kept saying that uh, if they need, if they needed to, if Israel crossed the line, and what they're doing with destabilizing the region, that they would basically start scorching, uh, scorching the region and set it on fire, basically. But um, from the limited amount of information I know about kinetic weapons. I haven't heard too much about it until recently. It's kind of an alternative to nuclear weapons because it's not as messy. Um, basically telephone size telephone poles made of tungsten, which is basically kind of what they fill those gold bars with. Moving at mock speed, so you can just imagine the force of that. U.S. uses Syrian rebel supply lines as it prepares to send arms. The U.S. has been quietly testing the Syrian terrorists. I, I don't even know why I call them Syrian terrorists or foreign jihadist terrorist mercenaries. Uh, basically, testing the ability to deliver food rations, medical kits, and cash to the terrorists. It says as Washington prepares to send arms to them. Militants in Syria shoot 51 civilians in head. So again, these are the same people that the Washington is arming. So these uh, armed militants or terrorists in Syria executed around 51 civilians in Khan al Sala, uh, a strategic town close to the northern city of Aleppo. Reports said on Friday that the civilians were killed on Monday after the town fell to the militants. The victims were all shot in the head. If you see my video, Enemies at the Gates of Syria, it mentions uh, one of uh, Assad's speeches where he says that the uh, terrorists keep attacking their grain and uh, wheat or mills, basically, all of their silos with their food in the dead of winter. Assad's forces killed 12 rebels taking flour from mill, says the activists. So who are the activists, right? At least 12 rebel fighters were killed on Monday as they were taking flour from a mill on the eastern outskirts of the capital, Damascus, opposition activists. In other words, like, again, you look at my video, the enemies of the Syria, you can define that as the terrorists themselves saying that face the truth about President Bashar al-Assad. He's not going anywhere, says this is from the Telegraph. Regime change in Syria. Remember, regime change is according to a Brookings Institute policy made up by guys uh, wearing suits and ties and uh, basically are um, working for the West. So step by step in Syria looks very unlikely despite the lengthy civil war. Again, this is not civil war. These are foreigners, foreign mercenaries. They're not even really Muslims. Uh, being paid by Western democratic nations to uh, take down a sovereign nation. And they're promising these jihadists, or these mercenaries, uh, uh, basically a Sunni Islamic uh, state with Sharia law. But they're not going to get it. What they're going to get is Libya and Afghanistan and Iraq. So they say it's bad news for the region and for the West. No, it's actually good news for the region, and it's bad for the West. 
War on Syria will draw in Russia and trigger World War III, says analyst. Go in there and check this out, says a former U.S. Marine, uh, Ken O'Keefe, told Press TV on Saturday that Russia will not remain indifferent to a potential military attack against Syria, says that intervention in Syria would instigate a third world war by inevitably getting Russia involved in the conflict. This was super heated. Um, uh, between this uh, O'Keefe and this Lee Kaplan, I guess he's a Zionist uh, Jew, and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. But the most interesting thing I thought I saw, besides this guy making an ass out of himself and backing a policy that's basically uh, uh, failing, is that um, is that he kept mentioning how the West needs to support the Kurdish uh, activists or the Kur uh, basically help the Kurds create an autonomous Kurdish state. I've actually made a video about that about a year ago, saying that uh, Zionists will back a, an, uh, basically a Kurdish proxy state. So in other words, they'll, oh, for human rights, we'll go and we'll help you, you know, um, while, you know, they're the biggest human rights violator in the world. So, but this is a create a, a proxy state, and that is, again, when they don't get what they want, they they just move on to another objective. So we heard about possible ground troops by the United States are mulling them with General Dempsey. Uh, saying that, uh, no fly zones, of course, but also you see news coming out of uh, Britain basically setting the precedence for a chemical attack, saying that the British government supplied the Syrian government with the chemical weapons. Also, the West is also supplying their uh, mercenary terrorists uh, with uh, these chemical hoods for a chemical attack, so be prepared for another chemical attack by the terrorists. Of course, to be blamed on the Assad government. Syrian Kurds expel militants from key villages so we have here Syrian Kurds made rapid advances in north uh, to, in the north Tuesday, expelling militants from a string of villages. A mistrust between Kurds and Arabs grows. And another point I was going to make, the, I think at the point that I made in that video about the Zionist one, a Kurdish proxy state, is that it's kind of a, another aim, another stick at Russia. So Syrian army, Palestinian volunteers advancing towards camp near Damascus is a good video if you type that in. You can uh, find it's a good video to watch. So it says some of the militants have adopted a scorch earth policy and burn their houses as they retreat to slow down the advancing military units fighting alongside the Palestinian volunteers. So the Syrian army and Palestinian volunteers have been forcing out foreign backed uh, militants from a refugee camp outside capital of Damascus. An official of the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, which is battling for the camp, says the camp had been occupied by thieves. He says, as you know, the armed groups entered Yarmouk eight months ago and displaced over 200,000 people as part of a plan to enter the capital of Syria. It turned out that they were thieves and they looted the camp. We tried to get them out using peaceful means, and now we have no other means but to forcefully, forcefully uh, liberate our camp, and we won't retreat. Israel and U.S. dictated the European Union's move on Hezbollah, says Nasrallah. So it goes on here and it says that um, they've condemned the European Union's decision to declare the group's armed wing a terrorist organization. He says, I don't feel that at all this uh, decision is a sovereign European decision. It was dictated to the Europeans, he said, noting that the Israelis are behind this decision as they have said so themselves. The U.S. is with them 100%. North Korea and Syria hold cordial talks. According to the report, Kim exchanged with the guests views on the issue of boosting the bilateral relations and other issues of mutual concern, including the regional situation. I think there was a quote, I was trying to find it, where, um, uh, where the leader of North Korea was basically saying that uh, Syria and Assad, he said that uh, the reason they haven't gone down is because of their people and their leadership. U.S. supports Salafism to sow discord among Muslims, says Iran MP. He says that the U.S. and its allies spread extremist thoughts and support Salafism to... Uh, so discord among Muslims stressing the importance of strengthening unity and solidarity to counter conspiracies. Israel provokes internal conflicts to destabilize Middle East, says an analyst. Says Israel's strategic doctrine is to destabilize the Middle East by provoking internal conflicts in regional countries in an attempt to ensure its own survival. And that's how it ensures its own survival is through chaos. Interview with Kevin Barrett described Israel as the biggest destabilization factor in the Middle East. In order to survive, it must destroy all the sovereign states around it by splitting them up into ethnic and sectarian enclaves, or they call them balkanization, which uh, uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski talks about a lot. Uh, this is why Israel has created Al-Qaeda, or at least steered Al-Qaeda, greatly encouraged the formation of these extremist Takfiri militant groups and used them to destroy sovereign states throughout the Middle East. Then Egypt, Egypt's Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood, 
says that Zionists destabilize Arab countries. This is from a Jewish website, and it says here, Muslim Brotherhood's uh, leader or body blames uh, General al-Sisi of Egypt for committing massacres, the likes of which were only committed by bitter Zionist enemies, insists Zionist fingers maneuver countries of Arab Spring so as to fulfill vision of great Israel. So you can see what's happening. This is what I was covering before I... Uh, one on an um, unexpected, unplanned hiatus, which we talked about a greater Israel, Israeli expansion. And you have uh, Sheikh Hossein talking about that, about how certain things have to happen to fulfill the prophecies and stuff like that for Israel to overtake the U.S. as the leader of the world. White House on Egypt massacre, no comment. So Congress expresses concern while Obama desperately tries to avoid the issue. So it's become a black hole uh, Egypt has for the Obama regime. It says here 1.5 billion in military aid goes there annually, but what happens there is never, never officially recognized and by design. So yeah, basically the Egyptian police massacred 100 civilian protesters on the streets of Cairo, wounding thousands of others. Saudi King Abdullah pays $1 billion to help the Egyptian army remove Morzai from July 29th. Saudi political activists uh, revealed that the Al Saud dynasty has extended a $1 billion aid to the Egyptian defense minister to topple former President Marzai. Said the Saudi government is very much concerned that Al Sisi has failed to establish a new setting in Egypt successfully, as basically Morzai processors were out in full force. The IMF abandons plan to provide $4.8 billion loan to Egypt. We heard about that before, so they do not plan to restart negotiations about the $4.8 billion loan to Egypt until the country's military-backed transitional government gains recognition from the global community. Like I said before, it's not a sovereign military. That's basically um, a, a foreign military occupying Egypt there to uh, oppress and bring down any kind of uh, change, real change from the people. Saudi Arabia's King Abdullah clinically dead. We've covered this before, May 27th of this year. So, and he hasn't been seen in public, so who knows who's running that place. But CIA's favorite Saudi prince is laying the groundwork for post Assad Syria. King Abdullah names Prince Bandar, Director General of Saudi Intelligence. Uh, it says here on top of his post as Secretary General of the National Security Council. So, CIA favorite now is at the head of the intelligence. And I did an interview uh, with a radio show uh, this weekend on Saturday, and I mentioned about Saudi Arabia, about how we should keep an eye on them, uh, whether it's by design or not. Uh, there could be some, some uh, destabilization going on there as well. Saudi prince defects from royal family, says a report. The Saudi prince uh, Khalid bin Farhan al Saud has announced his defection from the royal family, referring to his suffering under the reign of al Saud, and called on other princes to break their silence. That the regime in Saudi Arabia does not stand by God's rule or even the country's established rules and its policies, decisions, and actions are totally based on the personal will of its leaders. Then I've heard this uh, before about how there's actually Jews that are running that place. Uh, it says Jews founded the Saudi royal family as a secret agent to destroy Turkish rule and eventually create Israel. And following report, it says here Wayne Matson. I'm not sure how credible he is if he's a disinfo, but it says here is that the young Turks who conquered Turkey were crypto Jews, as were the House of Saud ruling Saudi Arabia, both supporters of a Zionist state in Palestine, and the Sauds uh, originated Wahhabism, which was created to divide Muslims. Something else I found 2002 Iraqi intelligence report uh, Wahhabis are of Jewish origin, House of Saud is Jewish. It says here, King al Saud at the time in 1969 declared in the Washington Post uh, stating that we, the Saudi family, are cousins of the Jews. We entirely disagree with any Arab or Muslim authority which shows any antagonism to the Jews. So if there is extreme regime change there, uh, anti-Israel, that's why you have stuff like this. Saudi Arabia targeting Iran and Israel with ballistic missiles. That's from July 10th of this year. Saudi forces burn cars, houses during operation to arrest rights activists. Kuwait election says that here Shia candidates suffer at the polls. They're a minority, and it says here they've lost more than half of their seats in the second uh, parliamentary election in less than... It says here liberal and tribal groups have emerged the main winners. I'm not sure what that actually implies, what they are. Qatar learns money buys cooperation only within its borders. Billions of dollars into bankrolling revolutions in Libya, Syria, and Egypt, and... It says here the Qataris are finding that money can't deliver an airtight foreign policy. So it's not just Qatar. This is the UAE. This is the Zionists. This is the Zionist-occupied government in the United States, UK, Europe, your EU. So this isn't just Qatar. They're providing a lot of the cash, but a lot of the intelligence and stuff is coming from the West. It also verifies that they're losing. They're not getting what they want.
I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to have two videos today on uh, basically the Middle East and other places. So please join me in part two. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.